I believe photography can be beyond being a hobby and a profession. For myself, I consider photography as a lifestyle. For everything I do, may it be for an actual shoot or maybe just running errands, I try and infuse photography into my daily life. Which is actually the reason why eventually I evolved from being just a photographer into a content creator. Nico Valenzuela. I'm a landscape and architectural photographer. I started doing photography in 2007 and at first it was just a hobby but eventually it evolved into another profession. Now I shoot various projects with various international architectural firms and of course on the side I, I do my landscape photography just merely out of passion. Aside from shooting various projects for various clients, I am I take it upon myself to try out and play, play around with different camera gear, different photography-related tech items. And doing this as a personal endeavor actually led for me to become the first and only Filipino writer for the esteemed publication called fstoppers.com. So today we'll do a quick run-through of my creative process. We'll start out with preconception, how an image starts in my head whenever I see a certain scene. Then we go all the way to translating it into a final, foolproof, tangible photograph. And with the help of the ASUS ZenBook Duo, we'll be able to do that more efficiently. Today we're working on an image taken a few weeks back in Davao del Sur in Santa Cruz. This is an iconic location where many landscape photographers go to shoot this very interesting shipwreck. Or It's actually a graveyard for old ships. This was taken early morning just a bit before sunrise and the idea was, of course, to show the contrast between the devastation of the shipwreck and at the same time show the rather glorious look of the sunrise. So in terms of composition, I wanted the sunrise to be in frame right behind the two ships. I made the decision to actually dip myself in the water just to be able to get a good wide angle view of the situation. and. If you can see on the screen, the sun is strategically placed uh, right on a very obvious rule of thirds uh, point of interest. Whenever I post-process, the very first thing I do is basically a kickstart of my, my color profiles. So that means when you're using Adobe Lightroom, the first thing you do is bring out the color that you actually saw on your screen as you were shooting. So you do that by clicking on the profile browser and you can either choose between the Adobe profiles which is very very close to the in-camera settings. So for this one I'll choose the Adobe landscape profile. As you can see it gave you a better color palette um, showing the colors you would typically see during a sunrise or a sunset scene. The next thing I do is of course I make sure that my horizon is straight. There we go. One thing to consider is that the cameras we have now, all these advances in technology, they give us so much information to work with. What you have as your shot out of camera uh, JPEG is actually not a good not a good image of what you can actually extract out of that shot. So if you're shooting in RAW, especially when you're shooting with a powerful camera, then you can bring so much more to, to the image. And that means you bring out details hidden in the shadows and in the highlights. What do I mean? When we're working on Adobe Lightroom, the first few sliders are exactly for that purpose. You have to understand that the RAW file actually is a very, very bulky file compared to your JPEG. So that means that you're able to bring out these details 
without even bringing out so much noise. So what I like about my Zenbook Duo is that the second screen works as my zoomed-in monitor. Um, this is actually zoomed in one is to one, which means it gives me an idea if when I'm bringing out details, am I also giving birth to noise? So this image shot out of the Sony a7R III actually gives me very good detail recovery. Next, to give our sky a, a bit more character, we want to slide down or extract more details out of the highlights. So by basically using the highlight slider, we bring out some more details in the sky. One quick trick actually to give you a good idea if your exposure or at least the brightness of your output is would look good either for social media or for print. If you use the hotkey S, it gives you a shortcut to soft proofing. Now this is actually used by um, photographers for printing, but it gives, by giving you a white background right behind your photo, it gives you an idea of how it would look on your screen, on Facebook, on Instagram, and all those. Next thing I would do is do focal adjustments just to balance out my frame. If you notice, there's a bit of darkness on the lower left. So what I would do is just use a very simple graduated filter. Up the exposure about 0.6 to 0.9. And balance it out. Apply another one here just to balance it out. It's a bit too much, so we'll decrease it a bit. There we go. Now I want to abuse a bit more the sky and give it more detail. So what I'll do is use a graduated filter with just a bit of dehaze just to give our sky a bit more character. And the benefit of focal processing is that we also get to adjust the colors in our selected area. So that gives us a bit of a warmer sunrise than what it actually looked like earlier. Now, my favorite tool is the radial filter that I use basically to recover more detail. It works by creating a circle or, or a round filter with feathering just so our, our changes won't be too abrupt. By increasing the exposure on that region, we just bring out a bit more detail over there. Just so it doesn't look like the sunrise was overpowering our main subject or our main object of interest. Now we head on over to color. We have to understand that color accuracy is very important in editing, especially in landscape photography. No matter how good your camera is, it's bound to confuse certain colors for the other. So what we, we do now is actually use the HSL module just to mix our colors very, very carefully. If you can see on the left side of the frame, there's a bit of green out of the shades of yellow, and we want to cancel that out just by adjusting the green slider. We also want to decrease a bit the purples just to give our colors that complementary feel that they deserve. Once you're okay with your colors, then what you do next is basically the final, final touch that gives it unity. Now, Unity is the aspect of visual design that gives you more emphasis on your object of interest. Of course, for this one, we want to give it more direction towards the shipwreck. So this is another way of applying a vignette, but you have more control over where it applies. So we'll invert this radial filter and adjust it just so it's 
on the ship rail. And there we go. Now we're going to export this and move on over to Photoshop. So we're now on the Photoshop part of our very simple workflow. Now, if you notice, I'm using the, the ZenBook Duo with the screen extended between the two displays. So what we're going to do now is just actually just doing a bit of cleanup. If you notice on, on this, you will see that some bright elements are right by the edges. If you've attended some of my workshops, I always tell my students that we should always avoid dangling elements that are bright enough to be significantly distracting. So what we're going to do now is actually just a bit of cleanup using a heel tool. And well, you can, well, you can do this with a mouse, but what I like about doing this with the ZenBook Duo is actually moving it over to the second screen and editing it with the Asus Pen. So what we'll do now is basically just literally erase that cloud. So we're erasing this cloud right here. What Photoshop is going to do is basically get a graph from another part of the screen just to make it look seamless. Now, of course, you should always check whether Photoshop is doing it well because it's looking for, for just random parts of the frame to copy. And of course, if, it, if you're going to do this on a scene with reflections, then always, always check on the bottom part. So as you can see, that bright cloud actually reflected on the lower part of this frame. So we'll do the same thing here. So actually the reason that got the, the, the feature that got me very much interested in the ZenBook Duo is the use of the pen on the secondary display. It's, it's basically now I have my graphic tablet on board. So there, if we zoom it out and return it to single display, you'll be able to see the final output. Maybe just a bit more clean up here. The only thing you have to do now is export it into the file size you want, resize it if you're gonna post it on social media and you're done. So after the very quick and simple workflow that we did on Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, we now have this final image. So basically a quick rundown of what we did was a bit of fixing of our uh, cropping and our horizon. We used the color profile to bring out the colors we, we already saw in camera while shooting the photo. And we adjusted a bit of the colors and at the same time we, we added a bit more coherence into the composition by applying a radial filter that gives us more coherent movement from throughout the frame to give focus to our main subject. As a photographer and content creator, the ZenBook Duo has been helping me so much. First, its, it's computer, its specs is very capable to handle the raw files of the bigger cameras that I use. It doesn't have so much delay, actually very barely any. And with that, it makes me more efficient. Now, the additional features such as the ScreenPad Plus and the Asus Pen that goes with it gives me a, a bit more flexibility in applying my focal adjustments. Whether I'm just doing global editing or actually working on composites, it makes my workflow more fluid and more efficient. So for any aspiring photographer, those who want to start doing landscape photography, cityscapes, travel photography, and even architecture, the key thing to it is finding the gear that fits you. So 
pick a camera that works well with your workflow that gives you the optimal image that you're looking for. And then pick a computer that can process that very, very easily. And after that, your creativity is the only crucial thing that you have to work on. Again, I'm Nico Valenzuela, a landscape and architectural photographer and a Zenbook Duo user. This has been Do You with Duo.